story is 500 years old, but still very timely today. Can we talk a little bit about that? Why it's relevant today? Yeah, I think the whole reason to, to tell and retell stories is to, ex you know, by examining our past, we can kind of make sense of what's happening at the present. And this story is an example of that. We're, we're you know, particularly focused on, uh, you know, <laughs> a sisterhood and mm -hmm. um, being in a position of power when you're a woman in a male-dominated society. Um, so many more themes in this movie are, are still prevalent today, but... Uh, you talk now. Yeah, I suppose, it, it, you know, ultimately you can have a film that scale-wise can be massive, but ultimately if there isn't a heart to it, no one's going to relate to it. And so we needed to find the the genuine human relationships that, drived, that, drive, that drove the film forward. Um, and that was mainly the relationship between these two women and how they never met but were fierce sort of allies and also competitors and also sisters and nobody really understood this woman's position like the other one. Um, and yeah, and I, I, you know, the, 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 it was a game of chess in the English court and in the Scottish court and the relationships that... Mary had with her half brother and her counsellors um, and Elizabeth down south, they were complicated. And I guess that's what we wanted to show that mm -hmm. relationships are not straightforward. And then when power is involved, it adds a whole other layer of, of difficulty, you know? Right. So when you guys have, you're the two leading ladies of this film, but you have this one, only one scene together. Tell me about shooting that, because I understand you guys were, you know, split apart before doing that. When you saw one another, you know, for the first time shooting that, what was that experience like for you both? Yeah, it was it was really emotional, and it, everyone went to great lengths to make sure we never saw each other in character up until that point, which I really appreciate because it did make all the difference. It was, hard, it yeah. was uh, you know, there was incredible build up to this moment, especially since we're portraying a moment that historically didn't actually happen, but a lot of people have kind of ruminated on the idea for, for years and years about what if they had met, and it's, I think it's been depicted in a couple of screenplays, uh, mm. you know, um, Well, the on Schilling stage. play was all about that, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. meeting. Yeah, um, but, but <coughs> not, not, in, not on film before. Mm -hmm. And it's a great what if question, and I actually don't think it's that implausible. A lot of things have been covered up throughout, throughout the century. So um, it, was, it was a big, big moment on set and it's also kind of that moment in a script where you're like oh this is a big scene mm. in the movie and there's a there's a bit of trepidation around that and sometimes those moments come and they don't actually eventuate into the moment that you had in your head perhaps and then mm -hmm. other times it just takes off and becomes its own thing but this was definitely one of those instances yeah. where it really uh kind of it was something entirely different and unexpected and really 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 mm. overwhelmingly emotional yeah, very emotional for both of you. I heard you guys started crying, were in each other's arms and everything. <laughs> yeah. We held each other for a long <laughs> time. <you> do? <laughs> they yeah. had to drag us apart <laughs> and say, do it again another that 19 times so we can, so we can edit this together. Back to Australia. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and I gotta, I gotta ask you, Margot, about, I'm gonna calling it your, your make under. When you saw yourself m made up as Elizabeth, I mean, did you have any hesitations or what, what did you think when you saw yourself? Like I that? loved it. Mm -hmm. I really loved it. Loved it. I, I it, you know, it wasn't scripted to be quite the drastic aesthetic um, transformation that you end up seeing on screen. It, it kind of was scripted more like she's ill with smallpox. It doesn't go into detail about there's pus and her eyes are swollen and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and her veil is literally sticking to the pus on her face. It didn't go into that level of detail, but it's it's it's, <laughs> it's disgusting. Yeah, it's really it's really something. But we we're looking at pictures of people with smallpox and it's. Horrific! It is. It is that drastic, and looked incredibly painful. And um, it, it also helped us answer the question of why did she end up packing on all that white makeup, and you know why did she have the receding hairline and the wigs and all that? Mm -hmm. In real life, she actually also had wooden teeth, but we didn't take it that far. No, yeah. I know. Yeah. So oh, yeah, we def definitely didn't over exaggerate the look. <laughs> in fact, we we came in just short. But um, it was great. There was very talented people who were brave enough to say, let's take it to that place, and I was definitely game. Yeah, um, uh, Sersha, how did you uh, prep for the role? Well, I had five years to prep for it. Um, I signed on to it when I was 18, and so 
we didn't know when it was going to go because the script, it was still sort of a concept. It hadn't been like a, a fully formed thing yet when I signed on. So different keep, people came on board to have their take on it and um, we had different cast members, different directors, things like that. And it, it went through a real journey before we finally got to the point where it was like solidified into this thing that it ended up becoming. Um, but yeah, during that time, I'd, I don't know, I'd take trips up to Scotland every now and again. I think that was a really important thing for me. It was just like feeling really connected to that country and I do and I had worked there when I was really young and always loved it um, and just felt very very kind of connected to it and being able to spend time up there go to Stirling Castle and Edinburgh Castle and Linlithgow and play, all the places that she would have spent a lot of time in really helped and then when it came to actually rehearsing Wayne McGregor, who was our choreographer um, on the film, worked with us all an awful lot on physicality and how we would move. And I wouldn't have found Mary without him. He he got me out of my head, basically, because I had been reading John Guy's book so much, which was so helpful and was such a sort of fountain of, of information. Um, but I did need to put that to one side and, and actually look at her as a, as a woman and, and as a person. And he helped me do that, so.